That was very interesting, and uh, the guy kind of came off as genuine to me based on uh, <clears throat> just how he described his reaction or whatever. I kind of had a similar reaction myself, so I can kind of see where he was coming from on that. Uh, yeah, my name's Mike Richburg. Uh, I live in South Carolina. I was born and raised in South Carolina. Uh, spent most of the time of my life, you know, outdoors for one reason or another, hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, whatever. Well, once, uh, when I was 14, uh, in 1978, I was engaged in a deer hunt on the Congaree River, in the Congaree River swamp. And, uh, now, Michael, you I said you were something. engaged in a, in a deer hunt. Could you tell us what, you know, how do you guys hunt deer down there in South Carolina? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, this is, well, you know, commonly you either like dog driving or you're still hunting, you know. And uh, this was like a dog drive situation which I'm not pro or against, for or against hunting, whatever, you know. Uh, I used to hunt, I don't anymore. It was a way for me and my dad to spend time together, whatever, you know, it is what it is. But uh, I'm trying not to make a political thing out of it, in other words. But typically, you know, uh, in a dog drive scenario, uh, in our situation where we, uh, and I've hunted this area many times, uh, actually, in this general area, uh, well, it's one hunt club. My dad was a member of the hunt club. We hunted pretty frequently down there. Uh, most time on Saturday morning, you uh, would uh, all meet somewhere at the nearest restaurant and open up at the crack of O Dark 30 and uh, eat some grits or whatever and then uh, go load up. And we'd go to the clubhouse, talk about the hunt, exactly how he's going to deploy and everything, game plan, strategize. Then they'd set standards out, you know, like uh, it'd just be a bunch of rednecks in a truck going across the swamp <laughs> down the lane road, you know, a little two rut road or whatever. And uh, the basic concept uh, at that time, of that, that morning, uh, is the property was right on the river. And a lot of the big bucks would just uh, opt to, you know, screw this dog drive thing and swim the river. So, you know, in an effort to try to turn the big bucks or more big deer back into the hunt, a lot of times, uh, or that prevailing thought at the time was to string as many hunters down the river as possible. Now, is this a lowlands? What type of, uh, how how dense is the uh, human population here? If you can see on my map right here, a faint outline of a white ring on this topo map, that's the raised sand rim of a bay. And we were hunting in this bay on the Congaree River. Wow. We're not going to go to the exact location, but yeah, very swampy on both sides of the river right here. All right, so Very you small. you were 14 years old, and I understand you walked in with your dad, and, and he told you where to go to this stand. Yeah, well, yeah, it wasn't a stand, per se. What they did is uh, they decided, like I say, to string out as many hunters down along the river as they could, try to turn the deer back toward, a, you know, where we could redeploy on them again, because strategy usually wouldn't be just one dog drive. You do it two or three times or whatever. So, yeah, they strung us out, and uh, my dad and I was the last two guys in the back of the truck, the guy took us down to the furthest point away from everybody else and put us out. Then he left to go in his truck somewhere. I'm not even sure where he went or whatever. But my dad and I walked from this primitive roadway, if that's what you want to call it, uh, into the swamp toward the river, about a quarter of a third of a mile, I'll say a few hundred yards. And I'm looking at it right here on the map. I'm not going to bother measuring it, but a few hundred yards. Uh, and when we walked in, I guess about a hundred yards or so, there was a little stream uh, that we were parallel with. My dad told me, okay, go ahead and cross the stream here. And we'd both walk in, one on each side of the little stream, until we got basically to the riverbank and then turn around, you know, to receive any incoming deer that might be flushed our way or whatever. So, you know, I, of course, you know, being a bit of a novice at 14, don't get me wrong, I mean, I've been in the woods plenty of times. I knew to listen to my daddy, so I did exactly what he told me or so I did, and uh, we're across the stream right there. It was just enough to kind of get your boots wet or whatever, but as it got down to the river, it opened up to a big cut, like a uh, floating log jam, probably a few gators in there or whatever. And uh, so that put a little bit of distance between my dad and myself. He was a little further up river than I was, and that made me the last stander down on the river, if you will, the further south or southeast. And uh, as soon as I walked in, is when it happened. Uh, I walked in there, like I say, on my side of the little stream, and I crossed kind of a semi-open area, just because it was uh, probably like standing water situation, keep the vegetation down a little bit right in there. And uh, I got over to the riverbank, and it was so foggy, and of course this is right at first light, uh, 
we waited actually, my dad and I, till we didn't have to cut the flashlight on. We didn't have to wait around long, maybe about 5, 10, 15 minutes. I'm not sure. Long enough to BS a little bit, but walked in the first light, got in there. It's real foggy. I never actually saw the river. I got to where I could see like there was trees no more, but I knew I was right there at the river. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've been there before, all in there and everything. I knew where the river was. Even though I could not physically see the river, I knew I was pretty close to the river. And I'd estimate I was probably about 40 feet at the most from the riverbank, maybe 20 feet from the top of the riverbank. All right? So I go in there, and I'm uh, you know, pretty jacked up about it. Uh, I'm hunting with uh, a lot of my peers, my dad's peers, extended family, uh, members of the community, they're important people and whatnot. You know, uh, big thing, it's like, uh, you know, the hunting thing is a big deal in parts of the South or whatever. So I was ready to impress somebody with a kill and a big buck or whatever. I was all jacked up, 14, ready to show I had a set too or whatever. So uh, I heard something come out the river, right? Well, in other words, let me make sure we're straight on this. When I got the river, I turned my back to the river and looked kind of back toward where I just crossed. And as soon as I stopped moving, pretty much, I mean, I just got settled in. I heard something come out of the water on the riverbank just to my left. I would say maybe 30 feet away. And I didn't know what was going on at the time. I just heard something like the water slosh and something come up the bank. It was a pretty big one. I said, okay, here's a big boy. I said, bingo. My dad was smart, put me right on the deer or whatever, you know. So I got to, like, at this point, I'm already, like, shouldering the semi-automatic shotgun, and uh, probably it already take the safety off, I guess, at that point. I was ready to, you know, cap some ass or whatever. So there's a big buck on that one. And then uh, this thing kind of was like bumping into some brush and stuff in there, and it sounded real heavy, you know. And I said, that's like kind of too heavy for a deer. And then, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to light this cigarette now. Uh, it really shook me up. But what happened then, and that's when I first knew something wasn't right, is the thing made a noise before I could ever see it. It made a noise that wasn't a noise I would associate with any other animal but a man. And I would call it like a, like a <clears throat> kind of noise, like a side grunt, kind of like if you pull a thorn out of your foot or you uh, maybe have bowel relief or something, just kind of a funny, almost human like sound. You heard this it before you fair. saw it, Mike? Yeah, this was completely before I saw it. It was still in really thick vegetation, really close to me, though. I'm going to estimate, like, maybe 30 feet. And uh, I don't know what it did, but it made that sound. And I, so I went from, like, okay, it's a deer to maybe it's a big hog to I don't know what the hell this is. That was just not, I didn't know what the thing is. Funny sound, man. I, almost like, is it a person, maybe, or something at this point? And then it came out. It started moving, and it came out to where I could see it. And then it was like, okay, that's a bear. No, it's not a bear. It's a gorilla. No, it's an ape man or whatever this is I'm looking at. It's not a gorilla, but it's, there it is. And, I mean, when I seen it pretty good, and I made that draw on this real sketch or whatever, but that's about when it was maybe 40 feet away from me because it kind of walked out from the river, kind of still to my left, but kind of out in front of me a little bit. And I was looking at its back. I got a pretty good look at it, even though there's a lot of vegetation and stuff in there. And, uh, man, I don't even know how to describe, like, all I can tell you is I watched it carefully. And I just stood there with a gun on it. And, like, I watched it walk over to where I had been, like, where I walked in at. Right to where I walked in at. And it stopped for just a second. And it didn't like jump back and blow and make a fuss like a deer or nothing. But I know it went to me because it just stopped. Then it angled to its left and went right on into some other brush out of my field of view. Just a few feet away. So I saw it pretty good when it was about 40 feet away. And by the time it was about 60 feet or 70 feet away, I lost it in the brush. At that time, I realized I had wet my pants. Even though I just urinated maybe a half hour before that or whatever, right before we walked in. Uh... I was shaking really bad. I put the gun down and put it on safe. 
And then I realized I was crying. I wasn't crying like somebody took my candy bar crying, like a voluntary thing. I just noticed like my eyes are watering. I'm all like shaking and my face is wet and I'm just like freaking out. I don't know. It just shook me up real bad at the time. Because, you know, if I've seen a bear or some clown in a costume or something like that, I've been pretty cool with that word because that's kind of almost normal. What I've seen, I wasn't prepared for. And, you know, I, I, I hadn't seen the, the, the Patterson Gremlin film uh, at that time, but I had, I think, seen this Legend of Boggy Creek movie. It came out like a year before that or something, maybe. The Falk Monster. From Fox, uh, Arkansas. Oh, the Legend of Bobby Creek or something. I was like at the drive through or something. This is circa 77 or 78. Yeah, I think that's from Fox, Arkansas. Is the Legend of Boggy yeah, Creek. That might be actually related to that. I'm not sure about that, actually. But this thing, it didn't really look like that. And see, so at the time, man, I didn't really think I'd seen a Bigfoot, per se. It was like... Uh, I just saw Eight Man. It wasn't like Legend of Boggy Creek, all like 10 foot tall and... You know, swamp moss and algae and all this, you know, Spanish moss hanging off of it, booger man kind of thing. I don't even know how to describe it. The best way I can describe it is it looked like a chimp gone incredible hole. Really just super broad, massive shoulder arm area, cartoonishly. I always use the term cartoonishly large arm. And, uh, Man, it shook me up real bad. Like I say, I didn't. I was just like sitting there, and then I heard the dogs cut loose. Because about that time, like I don't know, however far away, you know, they dropped the tailgate on the dogs and cut the dogs loose. That means the dog drive was on, and that was a great joy for me at that point because I figured the dog would come this way, they'd bring hunters, you know, with guns and dogs. That's all good. Anything that would come my way would be good at that point. Because I was pretty scared, and. Uh, and, I, and right after I heard the dogs, I believe, it was when I smelled the smell, real bad smell. I would smell, the smell was very similar. You ever smell a large buck in the rut, in the peak of the rut, just really rank, but also like a dead animal roadkill smell. And it was really nasty smell. And I, and I attributed it to that animal. But it could have been coincidental. I'm pretty sure it was it was that animal. But uh, anyway, the dogs turned and went the other way, and I didn't quite know what to do, man. Uh, I sat there for a minute trying to strategize, like, because, like, it went out the way I came in. I mean, like, the cuts on one side, the river's behind me. It's right there somewhere. It just walked out there. So I gave it a few minutes to move on or whatever. I figured I didn't want to hang around until it came back or whatever, so I'm, I just kind of sized the man up. I did have a gun or whatever, even though I'm going to tell you right now, man, that little gun, a shotgun ain't going to do you no good on what I seen. Even what though this gauge shotgun like, did you have, Mike? No, nah, I'm going to tell you exactly what kind of gun. I had a 20-gauge Belgian-made Browning semi-automatic with a factory poly choke, and I had number three buckshot, I'm quite sure. I don't know for a fact, but it's a common load for 20-gauge. And my dad probably would have put in a gun for me. It was number three buckshot. It's like a small buckshot. It's something appropriate for, you know, 13, 14 year old. Did you feel that you were adequately armed to take out that thing if it had negatory. come at you? No, negatory. Absolutely not. The gun was a joke. If it had been a 12 gauge, same design, it would have been a joke. I got an AR and 308 in there. It would have been a joke. I don't even bother carrying a gun with me now. It's a joke. Like I say, this thing maybe was six and a half feet tall, but it was like so thick and wide, I can't even describe it. It's like a cartoon or something, man. How wide that, would you say the shoulders were, Mike? Man, I, I know this sounds unrealistic, but I'm going to say at least three and a half foot, maybe four foot wide, even on something not much taller than a man. I mean, I'm sitting at a table that wasn't as wide as what I saw on the video. I'm I'm looking at this table right here. What I saw was at least as wide as this table I'm sitting at. Wow. That's probably, you know, a little better than three foot. Maybe. I, I, you know, if I say three and a half conservative. How thick would you say? I know I had the drawing which you uh, you sent to me, but what would your estimate of the thickness of it? Because you kind of saw this thing sideways, right? Yeah, I kind of saw it from the back, man, and it kind of like, 
you know, cornered across in front of me, and then when it got to where it smelled me, it cornered back the other way. So I kind of saw it from the side a little bit both ways, but I never saw the front of it too good. And I never really saw it from, like, the hips down too good because really a lot of thick vegetation in the whole area. Uh, it walked, like, with its arms down, like, on the side, like this, like the bully stance, like the old knuckle dragger, kind of slumped over a little bit, cupping that head, big old, like, and even in the drawing, didn't do justice to the mass of like the shoulder area. I don't know how to describe it, but them big old arms, he was doing just like a man would to move like branches out of his way and stuff. Like if you walk through the woods and like a sapling was going to hit you or a branch or something, he's just like a man walking through the woods, barely making any noise or whatever, man. So you know? it was using its arms as it went through the bushes like that? Yeah, just like you would move a branch out in front of your face instead of letting it hit you. He was doing the same thing. And considering how big he was, he was probably making a lot less noise than a man would. So. Was he? Do you do you recollect whether the creature was grabbing the branches, you know, like this, or whether it was oh, no, just pushing all the way? Him, uh, uh, affirmative. I saw a hand grabbing. I didn't draw a hand because I didn't attempt that, and or whatever in the little drawing. But affirmative. It was not a deer hoof. It was not a bear paw. I saw a primate hand come out and grab branch and move the branch and bend the trees down and moving through like we're using both of them just like I would moving through the swamp you know free now, totally fell out you said that this thing you barely got to the to the deer stand and pretty much immediately after you got to the deer stand you said you heard this thing cross the river do you have any idea I heard it come why? up out of the river what's that I heard it come up out of the river like do you think what's I your heard, opinion like, do you think it Mike, do you think do you think that it was coming out in in a reaction because it heard you, or was it just a coincidence? Nah, you... man, I, I don't think he knew I was there at all, man. It was in the river the same time I got there, and if it had been like on the river bank already and jumped in the river, it probably would have smelled me and knew I was there or something. Because I'm sure I had a ton of deep on or whatever. If you go in where I was at, man, you had plenty of chemicals on there. So I think me being up on the riverbank and him being down the river he never smelled me or nothing until he got to my trail. But he came up on the riverbank, and there's a real good uh, like geological reason, like a geographic feature in the area for him to be in the river right there. I won't get into specifics right now, but when he come up, I heard like the water move, just like if a deer or something just kind of come up out of the water, like I hear water running off of him or something, like a slosh and sound, like the water move. And I heard him climbing the bank. At first, you know, I thought it was a deer, like a big deer. I said, bingo. I mean, this is glory day. It's fine. You know, I'm finally cashing in. Go 20 gauge is going to do me right. And uh, then it sounded so big, man. I don't know. I was thinking maybe big hog or something. And I was thinking that might not be too cool. Because like I say, man, that ain't really what you want to walk up on in there. But uh, then it made that sound. And I didn't really know what to think. And then right after that, I started moving. And I seen it. And it just blew my mind, man. It was something, man. I, I know, like. And the big thing is, like, I didn't tell nobody, man. You know, I wanted to scream right then for my daddy, like a little scared bitch, okay? I really did. But I didn't know what to do, man. I sat there, and I tried to rationalize, you know, what I just seen and everything. And like I say, I manned up, and I walked on out, man. I walked on out to, the, like, the road. The man put us back to where me and daddy agreed to meet at. Like, if we didn't meet at the stream, if he wasn't waiting at the stream, just meet at the road, so after I give this time, thing time to get on out of there, I haul tail back out to the road. And then uh, wait a long time for my dad to come out. It was a good little while after that. Michael, I think you did you did really well considering you were 14 because I've talked to, you know, adult men that have encountered these things and had almost exactly the same reaction, you know, pretty much uh, sheer oh, it's terror. Me. I'm okay. Yeah, I mean, I, it freaked me out, man. I couldn't really... You know, I tried to match what I seen with a logical explanation, and I wasn't getting one, man, because I, I just didn't know. It was more like an ape man than anything, man. I, you know, it was just weird looking. It had like that coconut-shaped head, which I now think is something like what y'all call a sagittal crest or, you know, whatever. So did it have, was the head rounded, Mike, or was the head? Oh, man, like, kind of like the top or the back of it almost had like a coconut look to it. Not just the shape, the shape too, but like the color. And the texture almost looks like old coconut hair, man. I, I don't know how to explain it. So how it's long like, was the hair up here? Not that head? long, man. Like it looked to me like the hair on top of his head might have been dry. 
All right, and then he was wet, like from maybe the ears down or the neck down or whatever. Okay, so it's kind of hard to tell how long the hair was, really. I don't think it was all that long, but he was soaking wet, except for the top of his hair, which is like a lighter top of his head. I mean, it was like a lighter color. And I don't know, man, the hair wasn't all that long, man. It's maybe like a person's or something. But he had that old football shaped head or whatever. It was funny now, I think about it, but it wasn't funny at the time. What color was the creature? Uh, so brown, it was black, like a black bear or something. I would say, like, like I say, the, now the top of the head was like a little bit lighter color, like a dark brown. But I don't know if that's because it was dry or, you know, that had a lot to do with it probably. Or the sun hit him or something. I don't know. Maybe he'd been down the salon and had his highlights. Earlier, you compared it to like a chimpanzee that had turned into the Hulk. Was the, yeah, that's, yeah. Was the hair density, was the hair on it similar to a chimp or like a bear? You know, Man, it kind of looked a little bit like a bear. I would say it had like a uniform, neat, well-groomed coat. Man, it wasn't like all like full of twigs and trash or, you know, no funk going on or no marks or nothing. And, you know, had a nice, healthy-looking coat, actually, man. Kind of shiny, whatever. I mean, it was wet, so I could see, like... It was just kind of uniform and kind of bearish. I don't know. I hadn't really seen a lot of chimps, man. I don't know <laughs> how to compare that. I could look at some footage or something, but a little bit like a bear, maybe. Now, what about the front The front here? Was this fully furred, the chest part? I never saw the front of him, man. You know, like I say, I was kind of looking back. I always maybe got a little bit of that side of that head a little bit, both ways, but that was about it. Never saw the face and never saw his chest, really. He was real like V-shaped though, like wide at the shoulders and narrow at the hip. And he had, uh, I didn't see the lower leg, like I say, like the lower part of the body, like from about the hips down too good at all. But I got the impression for his height, he had a kind of a long torso and kind of short legs. You know, like he had a little bit of stubby leg thing on. But it was like the big arms were just like, it was all about them arms, man. He had knee legs, man. You gotta see his arms. About how far down would you say the arms went? Were they above the, his knee, below his knee? Did you get a sense of that? I don't know. I never really saw the knees, man. So that's a hard guess on that one. I'm going to say that the elbows was at least at the waist, though. They were longer than my arms. I got pretty long arms for a guy, whatever, you know. But yeah. They were, they were big, long-ass, giant, incredible hulk arms. It tripped me out, man. It's like, because it was like wet too, man. Like, every time he would go, like, move or whatever, I could see, like, especially like the shoulder muscle, whatever. I don't know the correct name for different muscles in the arm and the shoulder, whatever, but I could see muscles move. And this wasn't no, like, two midgets in a costume riding a donkey. <laughs> I was looking at muscles moving, man. I was looking at a real animal, and it was foggy, and it wasn't all broad ass daylight, nothing like that, but it wasn't far away, man. I saw it good, man, and uh, yeah, I'm forty feet is really man. close. What I was gonna say while I go is I, I didn't tell Dad. Like when he come out, man, he looked at me and said, "Dude, you all right? You don't look too good." Whatever. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm okay. I don't feel good." Whatever. And like I almost said something then, you know, and I didn't. And I won't explain that, man. Like my dad, he's like a military guy and uh, no nonsense kind of dude. You know, pretty practical fella. If I just said, "Yeah, I think I just saw eight man in the woods over there," or whatever. Uh, you know, that he would say, What kind of dopey smoking boy? If you're gonna be seeing grills, can't we take you in the woods? Something like that. <laughs> right. yeah, I wasn't about to act foolish and, or do anything stupid that would jeopardize me hunting with my dad. Plus, there's no way in hell I was gonna let like the three dozen guys at the hunt club know I seen some kind of monkey man or something because it'd be over then. Man. If my dad was, went right back and told them or whatever, I'd been through, man. I grew up my whole life as monkey boy or whatever. Michael, this yeah, is another thing that's that's pretty consistent. I mean, when people encounter these things, a lot of people, you know, don't tell anybody because the the, the thing that's going to happen is you're most likely to get ridiculed by, you know, your peers and, and the people around you, so you, you keep it to yourself. Well, that's what I was going to say, man. I, I mean, I never told nobody until, like, a few years ago, I told a good friend of mine and his roommate. Then I didn't tell nobody again. Until uh, I seen that show on TV about finding something, uh, figured that maybe uh, you know everybody sees one is not a freak, you know. 
I always just kind of had a lot of stereotype things like programmed into me, like you know, it's like a hillbilly, with no teeth, see something, man. Signs, you know, kiss sights, moonshine, or whatever. But I seen that TV show, and I figured, you know, it was like some regular people too. You no, know, they see something that they ain't supposed to be there, man. You know, right. it don't no, make all, you a freak. All sorts of people see these things, Mike. Yeah, and like I was gonna say, man, I never told my wife. For like, I was married to my ex-wife for uh, 19 years. I never even told her, man. I didn't tell nobody, dude, for like, this happened in 78. I didn't tell nobody to like three decades later. Michael, I really appreciate, you know, you haven't, I, I tell people that it takes a lot of courage, you know, to come out and publicly say this. But I think it's really important because if there are sightings that aren't being reported, I mean, that's information that we're losing out on. And the stuff... You know, I don't know if you listened to the Allagash sighting, but the creature that you're describing yeah. is an almost identical match to what the guy in the Allagash told me, along with the physical reaction it was almost exactly the same. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, if anybody ever walks up on these things and nothing pissed herself, they're lying. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. And I'm coming forward, man, because I don't care if people bash on me or hate me or whatever or think I'm lying or not or whatever. All that shit don't matter to me. The only thing that matters to me is I want people to know that it don't make you a freak if you see one of these things. It has nothing to do with you. That's and you right. should be honest. Okay, that's because my ultimate goal, man, is I know they're out there, man. And, like, people get caught up in all this, you know, blog hating and film analysis and all that. Like, everybody's real hyped up on Patterson Gremlins and real or not. It never really mattered that much to me, man, because it don't affect what I see in no kind of way. You know, I mean, sure, I got opinion. I, sometimes I look at that thing and think it's fake. Sometimes I say, I don't know why would they make it with boobs and all this stuff. And I don't know. But it don't really affect me one way or another. Mike, I know what I see. Uh, do you, did you have a sense of what gender it was, whether it was a male or a female? Man, I'm going to say male just from the way it was just so damn wide and powerful looking and everything. If that was a female, I don't want to never meet a male on <laughs> what do you think I, it the almost had to be male I couldn't imagine that thing being a female man. what it do you think it broad, might have weighed like, it's just too broad man. What's Michael, what do you think it weighed oh man this thing was incredibly heavy and I know this sounds like unrealistic man but I really like thought about this weight estimate a lot and only six and a half, and I say only six and a half feet, because like, a lot of times I hear people say Bigfoot's like eight, ten foot tall, whatever. This thing wasn't. It wasn't no more than about seven feet. But, man, I'm going to say honestly, probably at least 600 pounds, maybe 700 pounds, based wow. on uh, hogs and bear and stuff I've seen and, you know, cows and stuff. Six I would say that... Uh, he was wearing a 350 pound hog on his chest or something, man. This thing is like, <laughs> you know, you got to see this thing, man. The arms are so big and huge, man. And the shoulder, like, the, the mass of the back area was just, I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's cartoonish, man. Cartoonish is the best word. Have you gone, like, gone to a zoo and seen mountain gorillas or, or looked at mountain gorillas? Yeah, man. Uh, we have a pretty good zoo here and all. And uh, I, I, I actually looked at some grills and stuff, and I actually made a point not to look at anything when I made that drawing, just so it wasn't influenced. I tried to draw it completely from what I just remember seeing. So I don't know, man. You know, the anatomy might match, match not with whatever. I don't know about that, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm looking at some grills, especially like lately, because like I say, man, you know, being the environment I was in, or whatever, I just kind of compartmentalized this whole thing. And sure, I've seen stuff over the years, like Leonard Nimoy did a thing one time, and search of a thing i seen one time, maybe. And something that had Meldrum and somebody named Chilcut or somebody who was a forensics dude. And I've seen some shows anyway over the years that kind of interest me and all, man. But I didn't never really take it all that, like, go out and try to find it. Man, I never went back to that place ever again. I never hunted at that hunt club ever again. How does it affect you now when you go into the forest? Oh, man, I always keep it in mind. I mean, you know, it was a few years later. I was back in the woods, man. I've been in all kinds of places since then. There's, you know, different swamps and stuff. we got a lot of swampy areas in the state. 
uh, man, you know, it's always in the back of my mind, and I've seen things. I've shared a couple things with you that people told me and things I've seen. I always said, man, you know, that uh, maybe, you know, maybe that's something. And I don't know, man. It's kind of like I compartmentalized my thing, and uh, I done took it down off the shelf. I've been digging through it lately, man. I'm going to kind of like face the situation, and I'm going back exactly where I've seen this thing, man. I've been messing around that area. It's still a hunt club there. And, uh, you know, down here, like, if you just, like, go traps around, you might be an enemy hunt club spy or something. You get <laughs> shot the rear end around here or something. So, he was pretty protective about places and stuff like that. But I can't, you know, I'm actually uh, maybe talking about trying to get a boat somehow and, and doing it that way. That would be, be the most uh, logical approach, perhaps. Michael, do you, but, uh, I mean, I know this was a relatively brief, you know, you didn't have a lot of time there. Do you think that your physical reaction to this creature was because you know you were you felt physically threatened by it or more because it was something that wasn't supposed to exist oh it was uh simply a matter of i knew instantly that this thing could totally whip my ass in one hand and hold all the other hunters off of the other if it wanted to it was no if it, it whipped around and looked straight at me i'd probably die of a heart attack dude i'd have just dropped dead I, as a matter of fact, my game plan, I, I sat there when I seen that thing, I was like, oh, baby, my gun ain't big enough. And I figured if it turned and looked at me and, like, come at me or something, man, the only thing I could do is try to shoot it in the face or something and try to make it to the river and jump in the river and hope I outswim it or something, man, you know. Because it had me kind of hemmed up a little bit. Like, that cut was on one side, the river was behind me. It wasn't, it was right there. It wasn't no, really nowhere to run and... And but when I seen this thing, man, you couldn't outrun this thing. If it wanted to whip you, you was through, man. This thing could whip whatever it is in them woods, man. It ain't. It don't live in fear or nothing. What, what, what so I you seen. don't think like a black bear would have any chance with this with this thing? No chance. No chance. It'd be like King Kong beating up on some of them sci-fi animals or something. There's no no chance whatsoever. Now I'm you not. didn't. You there didn't ain't get nothing a chance in the woods, man. You didn't get a chance to see the face, but did you know notice that it had an ear or not? Oh, absolutely. It had round ears, like uh, chamfer, human-like ears. That's the first thing pretty much I noticed when it walked out there upright on two legs. And I said, bear? And I said, hell no, gorilla. And I said, hell no, eight man, maybe. You know, that's the first thing I zeroed in, was side of that head right there in that round looking ear. And I said, that ain't no damn bear ear right there because... I ain't no freaking bear here. There ain't no way to rationalize. Right then, I realized I wasn't dealing with nothing that was in no book I had been shown. Or you know what I'm saying? I knew was right the then size? it didn't have bear ears. It wasn't just no bear walking on two legs or nothing. How big were the ears, Mike? Uh, you know, I actually looked at some chimp ears and human ears. Since then, you know, reporting this or whatever. And it wasn't as prominent as, like, you know, like chimps got the big radar ears almost, like big Mickey Mouse ears. It wasn't quite like that. It was more almost like human ears. Almost like human ears, man. Now, I know you said that the coloration was dark almost to the point of being black. What color was yeah. the ears? And did you notice if there was fur on the face or did this, was the side of the face bare? Uh, I don't think he had any hair, like, on part of his face was bare. And the skin, if you will, was probably grayish looking. It was not a, uh, like, peachy, rosy complexion thing going on. Very, uh, there was definitely some area that didn't have hair. I'm not sure exactly what on the face. But it wasn't a rosy pink complexion. It was like a gray, just kind of like a, I don't know, just a bland gray color. That's really interesting, Mike, because that's the exact color that the guy in the Allagash reported was a gray, kind of an really? ashen gray color. I don't, I don't remember that in the interview. I'll have to go back and look at that one again. There was so much in that interview, man. I kind of got emotional. I felt from a man when I listened to that interview. Man. Yeah, no, he was, he was he definitely to. traumatized by, by the encounter. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I was traumatized, too. I mean, <laughs> for me not to talk about something, you know. But like I said, you know, this other fellow, like, if one of my buddies had seen that thing and then told me about it, I said, yeah, you need to get me some of that shit you smoking because it's better than the shit I got. 
<laughs> I said, you full of BS or whatever. So, now, Mike, you know, you, I, you know, got, man, I wasn't about to tell nobody. I didn't know, you know, people think you're crazy when you say stuff. Man. You got a pretty you good know? look at the at the arms. Did you notice, was the length of the hair consistent over the body? Was it, did it vary at all in the arms in relation to the length of the hair on the body? or? Like the hair on the arms and the hair on the back kind of looked about the same to me. Uh, I couldn't really tell because it was like wet. It like matted down, just soaking wet or whatever, you know, just wet. I, you know, the hair was, I hate to make a guess, it wasn't like what I call real long hair, like hanging off his arms or nothing, but a little bit, you know. You can tell, you know, there was a little bit of hair there. I, I, I don't know how to estimate that too good. I wish I, if I seen him like not wet, I could tell better. You know what I mean? So you also, in an earlier correspondence to me, you made some reference to the, when you saw the profile that it had like a, uh, looked like a football player. Oh, uh, I heard like on the episode of one of these shows they were talking about uh, like the one of my fellow rednecks got uh, weirded out when this dude was asking about the critter's ass or whatever. It's like you know, like he would try to tell the man he wasn't really checking him out that way or whatever. I thought it was kind of <laughs> funny. But uh, yeah, I want to make it a point to say this thing had definitely had a case of what I call linebacker ass. Like, I couldn't really see too much, like, from about the hips down, but you could definitely tell, like, this thing had a powerful ass, however you want to scientifically equate that. Now, what about like the thighs, Mike? Like, did you see them? The like, Go ahead. Well, you, so you said it had, like, a, a well-defined football ass. Was the thighs, could you see any of them? Was, was the brush too thick? Not really, man. I could just kind of see about the hips up, maybe the top of the ass, top of the buttocks. What would you say the diameter of the waist was? I know you said the the, the, the shoulders were three and a half feet. Oh, so. yeah, man. The shoulders was much wider, and he came down a significant V-shape down to a narrow hip. And he walked like, funny, man, like uh, his hip rotated. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Little stubby legs, probably. I couldn't really see, though, like his legs, but considering how long his torso was and all, his legs probably were pretty stubby. Based on the heights of the vegetation, I just walked through that same area, man. I walked right back out too that way, you know. Now so I know kind of about how big he was. You said that when he when this creature got to where it crossed your path, that you think it it scented you? Oh yeah, it scented me as soon as it got almost right up right on top of where I walked in. And it went, and the only reason I know that because when it got there, it just stopped. And you know, like. I've seen deer do it before, whatever. You know how wild animals kind of act crazy when they smell, it's out of place smell, like human smell. Or this, this was one cool cat, man. He just like stopped for a second and then angled off to his left a little bit and went on like that. Just kept right on walking. He so, like, did I got this thing intentionally avoided me. Like he wasn't looking to find me and whip my ass. He was just looking to scoot on through there. Yeah, that was going to be my question. So he angled away from you to get distance away from you quicker. Did he? Yeah, he just kind of angled, like he kind of quartered in front of me, if you will, over to my trail and then bounced back to his left a little bit and then, you know, took a new vector away from my trail, still heading away from me in the river. And what type of speed was this creek? I mean, did what was its pace, you know, about how fast was it moving? Uh, he was walking, man. Uh, it was kind of funny the way he walked. Excuse me, I got in just a little bit. I got I don't know, a little tense. But uh, the way he walked, man, it was kind of funny. He kind of rotated his hips and kind of glided through there. He was making pretty good time. He got through there quicker than I could. What was that last thing, Mike? I didn't catch that. Oh, I said he could go through there quicker than I could. He was making pretty good time. Because, I mean, he was just kind of gliding through there, bending them saplings back, moving them branch out the way, cruising right on through there. He wasn't making much noise at all, man. He just slammed on brakes when he got to where I came in there, and then he, boom, right back, just kept walking, kept right on walking, just on a new angle. Now, you've used the term ape man to describe this creature. You didn't get a chance to see the face. What what about it made you think it was, you know, why did you come to that conclusion it was an ape man? I don't know, man, because, you know, like at first I thought bear on two feet or whatever, and then it's like, no, damn gorilla. And then it's like, no, it's a man, it's a 
ape man. I don't know, man. It just didn't really look like a gorilla, and it wasn't a dude either. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It was an ape man is the best way to describe it. If you can imagine, it was almost more like a chimpanzee than anything to me. But one that was like, you know, gone total hulk out. Just like, you know, David Banner or whatever. Gonna blew it up. Blew the shirt off. Ready to whip some ass. I mean, you know, I keep emphasizing how wide and powerful this thing is, and that's what just freaked me out so bad, man. It was no question, man, you know, like, I'll put it this way. If you had, like, wrestle one of these things or mountain lion, nobody would not take the mountain lion. Everybody's going to take the mountain lion. If you've seen this thing, or you say mountain lion. So I'll take that by mountain I, I described it one time as a cross between King Kong and Alley Oop, the old, it's an old, like, 30s uh, cartoon strip. It's an old joke that had something to do with my dad about Alley Oop or whatever. I didn't know what it was. He explained to me what else I looked up. It's like this old cartoon strip. And it's like a caveman dude, right? You have to see it to, to appreciate it, I guess. But it looked like a, a combination between King Kong and Alley Oop. That's the best way I can describe it. Well, Michael, I'm really, uh, I'm really excited. I'm really happy that you uh, shared this with us because, like I said, I, I see a lot of similarities between this and the guy in the Allagash. And, and I know the people in the Bigfoot community are really going to, you know, appreciate the information coming forth. You know, because a lot no of other problem, people man. are, like you said, you know, people see these things and they, th they think there's something wrong with them. <laughs> not, I don't think there's yeah, something wrong I mean, with them. Yeah, I mean, you know, it don't make you freak to see something that don't belong. You know, and it took me a while to rationalize that. And there's a lot of people I understand because of who they are. They can't really come forward because of criticism or whatever. Just like, you know, certain people would lose credibility, you know, or whatever in some people's mind. I don't care, man. I saw what I saw. Believe it or not, whatever. It is what it is, as they say. So you're man, one you of know, the since I saw this thing and I, I didn't really, like, confront it or nothing. And I saw this TV show, man. I've really been getting in this thing heavy lately, as you can see. I've been, uh, like, you know, full-time squatching here all of a sudden. <laughs> but uh, first thing I did, like, is I took a map of my state and I plotted all the sightings I could find out about and all the ones I knew about and stuff on, on a map of my state. It's not like a logical thing to do. And uh, I immediately found out there's, like, two populations, two different critters in my state. And they're never seen, like, in the same places as well. So that immediately blew my mind and said, okay, well, if this is a hoax, these guys are really damn good. They've been doing all these generations, all these people, truck driver from Indianapolis, a uh, poor girl in a rural town, a uh, Marine, whoever, Air Force guy, where all these guys are all coordinate their story, so they're always red in this area, they're always black over here. I don't think so. So right there, I mean, I already know it's not a hoax, but... If anybody had any doubt, and you plot the signs out, you explain to me how elaborate a hoaxing network would have to be to always get the color right over, you know, a couple hundred years or whatever. Yeah, so I don't understand all the skeptics or whatever, and I know it's not in the, you know, the white man's western school books or whatever. That don't mean nothing to me, man. <laughs> I know what I've seen, all right? So I, get, I plot all this stuff, so there's two different kinds going on. So I then start learning about what will make them, you know, like one look one way and act one way, you know, what the differences are, man. I got all kind of theories and stuff on this thing now, man. Because I'm just like full-time amateur squatch researcher all of a sudden here. So I got all these little bozo theories and stuff. But uh, well, See, Mike, you know, you've got an advantage over somebody like me because you're the type of people that I refer to as, you know, knowers. You, you've seen, you know what you saw, and now, you know, you know something that other people don't know. Yeah, man, I mean, they're out there to be seen. Now, yeah, they're rare or whatever, and you always going to have people that ain't going to believe it. Just like, you know, when people in my state see they see a black panther, they say, no, nah, that's impossible. There's no such thing as an Appalachian black panther. You're tripping. Or an eastern cougar sighting. You know, no, it can't be. The book says they're not here. Or there can't be a cotton mouth in this lake. See, it's above the fall line. <laughs> yeah, uh, 